Stoner, man. Pull up a rock for a minute, man. And they call it... <sighs> so, I know you're used to being, uh, giving all the information that you're, you're trying to share and everything. By the way, thank you from people that care about the earth for all the great work that you've been doing out here to upkeep the ranch and, and, and you know, kind of keep people aware of the, of the whole entire history of the place. You know, not just uh, some of the more well-known or notorious attachments that the property has. Um, what, what started you in, in an interest in uh, the people that used to live here? Let's go say that. I don't want to use any... I want to try to avoid any terms that I consider to be... Uh, well, yeah, I understand. Like, propaganda or you know, something. Yeah. Really, what it is is that it just starts, first of all, from the area, from Chatsworth. And it's just a part of Chatsworth history. So if you're born and raised here, uh, you just, it's a story that you hear. But, you know, the certain tunnels and certain places, and we all go hiking up here. So it kind of started as a kid, just kind of walking around, hiking like everybody else. And then, uh, obviously, reading certain books. And then... Then after that, really uh, doing a little time, you might say, and then after that, studying about it. And once I got out, I kind of came back to the area, came here, saw how this place was. And at the time, it was just, you know, just it looked nice, but it just needed to be kept up. You could tell the state hadn't been doing anything in the area to kind of keep the area up. So I started kind of coming down here and then kind of moving things around, sweeping up a little bit. And at little by little, you know, one project leads to another. So it's like, you clean this area, and now you're done. Well, how about if I just do this? And how about if I just do this? And it's like, like the domino effect, where now you're starting to do a little bit by little bit. Like, as a matter of fact, where we're sitting right now in this cave, the dirt came all the way up. You wouldn't even be able to sit where you're standing. You'd be covered in dirt right now. There's no way nine people could sit under this cave. So it took me four days with my uh, roommate to dig this entire thing out now to where people can come down here and with their friends and, and recreate that famous picture that we yeah, all see. As yeah, fact, yeah. Uh, where nine people can actually sit in here now. And well, I, could, really I, nice. I, I could say that for anybody that, you know, grew up man. paying attention to this place a lot and everything and the Life magazine photos and the case and all that other stuff, yeah, the first time you get to come here and find this spot, I found it on my own. I, I hadn't seen your videos, or if they existed, I don't think at that time, and yeah. uh, I had to find it on my own and things like that, worrying about am I allowed to be here or whatever, but yeah, it's a pretty big... There's a, there's a vibe, a peaceful vibe here. It's it's uh, you can see why people uh, love this place and were attracted to it for a very long time. Um, can I ask you a question? There was you, you mentioned something about you don't have to answer. I am not a district attorney, however, no details. But you said about doing time. Where did you? I thought this was interesting because you mentioned it to me earlier. Where did you do time? If you want to answer that oh, question. Oh, I have a problem with a Corcoran, you know, at, at the new Corcoran. And, and the only good thing about that was, you know, everybody knows him. Charlie's a Corcoran, too. But he's, a, he's an old Corcoran. And the difference between old Corcoran and new Corcoran is we have air conditioning and there's no air conditioning on the other side. <laughs> Shit. Sweatbox yeah, yeah. on the other side, huh? Yeah. So, um, but well. It'll, it'll teach you a lot going there. Let me tell you yeah. That. I mean, um, so, obviously, that's a, a, a kindred uh, thing there with with uh, you know that was imposed basically I mean it might be through free choice that you end part of it but but uh, yeah like some kind of uh, almost family <laughs> for lack of a, not to make a pun but but you know when you know for anybody that's a brother like that in a place that you do the time in you know but um we'll, we could get into some uh, you know deeper points of of, of you know influence and so so when was the first time you came out here you know. Oh, wow, that's right when I just got out in 2011, I'd say November of 2011, I came down here. I actually saw a video from Michael Channels, I saw his video first, about how to get here. And so what? So if, if that's I, how it really started. So, so, but I'm saying you said after you got out of the joint, you came out here, right? right so was, was there already an interest in your head, or was oh, it yeah, something yeah. that was sparked while you were in there oh, that yeah, told was, you, when I get out of here, you know where I never went? I grew up in Chatsworth, I was right there, and I've never even been to Spawn Ranch. What was it that happened well, that made you kind of, like, it's like a sacred quest for you to come out here at that point? You know? I think it was just because I went to the, uh, the prison library, and there was a guy in there reading Helder Skeleton, and I'm like, yeah, I'm from Oh, that Chatsworth. pile. That pile of shit. You know, exactly. And then he's reading it. I'm, I'm, I'm from that area. I've been Spawn Ranch. I remember in you know, the hills of uh, not really so much Spawn Ranch, but like the Manson Tunnel, Stoder's Den, whatever you want to call it. Places like that around here that we all kind of ran around, drank our beer or whatever. Uh, 
and uh, he started, oh, you're from there, and he started asking me some questions. So as soon as I got out, I started looking it up on the internet, I got into YouTube, I was just trying to figure out what that was, I wasn't exactly computer illiterate at the time, and then once I found out what YouTube really was and what people were doing, I just typed in Manson Family Spawn Ranch on YouTube, and pop, uh, popped up uh, was a Michael Channel's video. And it said like Manson Family Cave, how to get to the cave, and it has some eerie music to it, and, and uh, showed you where to park and what guardrail to look for and how to walk over it and when the trail. And at the time there was water here, you wouldn't even be able to uh, sit here where I'm sitting right now. Uh, and I saw that video. So all I did was comment on the YouTube video. And I commented on it. He responds to my comment. He comes to my uh, YouTube channel, sees I've done a couple videos about being here, and he's like, Do you want to meet? And that was it. We met. And it's kind of weird. When you meet somebody who's in Manza for the first time, you don't really know. And people have done the same thing with me. When they meet me, you know, they're just like, oh, you know, they bring a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, they tell sure their people, okay. this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm wearing. You're, you know? you're not going to bring anyone out here to sacrifice right, for exactly. Anton Lave or. People get nervous yeah. when you meet people. And I was the exact same way. So I don't blame people when they meet me for the first time, man, or whatever. You know? That's cool, man, because, like, today, you know, we've been talking, but today, of course, first time we met face to face. But, you know, you pulled up in front of my house. I just came out and gave you a hug. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, brother? <laughs> you know, yeah. like. Yeah, that's the way some people are, man. That's the way it can you know? be, man. I, you know, there's there's ones that are interested. I would say that I would not give the hug to. Very obvious. I was I was commenting earlier about the fact that you have brought a uh, as much as can be seen from somebody with an open mind. I would say that you you've repped yourself real well. I was talking to you about that earlier. Of you know you don't come across as just some straight up you know nut job trying to you know. I don't yeah. know. Like you're not a member of the, like you know the, well, the prepubescent Marilyn Manson fan club. Right. You know it's this the perspective I bring it from. I try to bring it from a positive perspective, a different view, more from Spawn Ranch, not so much you know the Manson family, but it's it's the Spawn Ranch thing. A lot happened here. There was you know any any old movie that your parents might have seen, any old western was filmed. Even those old Marlboro commercials. Remember the first Marlboro cigarette commercials? Those were all filmed here. People don't realize that. was back when doctors right. were recommending a couple exactly, of those. Exactly, yeah. man. And people don't realize that. I'd say at least, shit, 70% or 80% of those commercials were filmed right here. So you can go on YouTube and look up Marlboro ads. So maybe it was know. all Philip Morris was behind cool, all man. this shit. That's well, what it was. There's a lot of famous <laughs> people here. This place, like I said, They're we're in talking it. about Corriganville. This place would be Corriganville if, you know, if the family never stayed here. This place would be considered a historical landmark yeah honestly, but it's it would not. be it would be done up like a, a yes. historic to hollywood right so right. Are, there, are there any uh name cowboy stars or anybody you can remember offhand that were that did films out here <laughs> off the top of my head that we're actually here no but um man there, i know there's it would be nice to compile a list of films that were shot there, on this property no there actually is there's a book out there uh that we just found that george simpson just found it's a, a book about every single movie made from every ranch in so this the, area. the seven ranches right, right. near here there right you can a find a map of that online i'm sure right. iverson uh i can actually uh when i go back i'll go on facebook and i'll i'll get yeah. the information you can post it later but I'll, I'll find out the name of the book there is a book that shows everything and actually the person that told us about that was the uh ranger that works here when you do trails day the state does trails day here she told us about the book yeah. um she yeah it was a woman. she yeah it's a good so. um is she hot <laughs> oh, i'm sorry that was me um so I, I can't i can't change well you know yeah, yeah. woman she in a uniform right. she got handcuffs so. She had a, a uniform. Really so um did you talk to her about the former residents of the ranch here or anything like that yeah but because she's so funny she's like because she's wearing the patch of the ranger she's like well because i wear this patch i really can't you know basically what she was saying is i can't speak my mind because i represent the park service and we just don't like that area but really what she was saying is i have no problem with that area i have no problem with those people it's actually kind of cool but because i'm a ranger right now working i can't really speak my mind freely about that topic and that's what the impression i was getting and she was you know right. what next if i meet her i'm gonna just say well dude get naked and then <laughs> you can, let me tell you the state does a tour every november called trails day they do a, a, their own version of the tour they don't come here but they'll do every remember spawn ranch is like 500 acres we're only yeah. in like three or four acres right so everything that way they do they just do not come this way now how you mean that's still 500 acres or at its heyday it was 500 acres it still is Okay, so is there any land that was part of the ranch that now has been sold off privately, like the stuff to the church, Rocky yes, Peak been, over here? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's actually four lots. Right behind us over here, there's okay. a house that was Frank Ritz's house. That's the, the church owns that. Across where Devil's Canyon was over here, Yeah. that church owns that. And right over here, two homes down this way, 
uh, way down this creek down here, and you'll see a rope swing and everything. There's two homes back there that the church owns. If you remember those old um, outlaw shacks, yeah, those outlaw shacks now are on private property. You cannot go. To I, yeah, so I, I saw right. they're up there on that end. Yeah, I, there's some really weird things that smell really bad in those big metal dumpsters they've got on that end too. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing there. Yeah, the first time I came out here. Uh, with a friend, her and I walked up on that end and we were trying to figure out where everything was, you know, because right. everything's changed. And as soon as we got up on that property, we were... Did they come out? Yeah, yeah, no, we were surrounded. And yeah. I just was like, what's that smell? And they're like, you need to get out of here. We're going to call the police. So as, as I wasn't trying to purposely disrespect them, um, didn't know what the boundaries were. That's why I'm having you teach me uh, what they are. Because certainly, again, back to representing, well, you've you certainly told people... Uh, you sing the songs of being respectful when you are, are out here and, and, and uh... Yeah, we need to be respectful with the people that live here because they know why we're here And so it's like look, they know why we're here. They don't really appreciate it too much But they're gonna they accept it and they're gonna put up with it So as long as we don't go on their property They won't come here and destroy stuff or do stuff because people think they're gonna do stuff here But just, just there's signs that say private property that are behind me over here now the main hill that you see that that is spawn ranch Pretty much that hill, you can't go on it, <laughs> even though people do all the and time. And which way is that from here? And that's actually right behind me. Right, right. and that's that's right. Any, anything on that hill, that way, that way. That whole part that's flattened out up there right. is the site of the original buildings. Right. Oh no no no, it's just a road that goes back there, and um, the site of the original buildings are actually behind you. Behind us here. Okay. Right. I'm just saying, but anything that way, you'll see cars going up there, the bridge. Stay off the bridge. Just stay off anything that you've seen developed up there. That's the church, you know. I mean, they really don't like people up there. A guy on an ATV drives around, here. and they won't put up a fence. They're just gonna. It's just cheaper for him to drive around on this. Yeah, that guy on the quad's pretty uh, interesting fella. There's a couple of different people down here. There's Ray, the golf cart guy. We call him, and he thinks he owns the property, which he might. Who knows? We really need to find out for sure uh, where the baby caves are. So if you're ever, if you're ever at the baby caves and a guy comes up and says you're on his property, his well, name, hopefully his before you split, brother, you're going to take me to every spot here before you get out of yeah. town. Uh, any, uh, I've seen you reflecting on that. You're making a life change, of course, in your year-end yeah. uh, show. And uh, any now that we're sitting out here on Christmas Day, any more uh, waxings on... I mean, I know this has been such a big part of your life for so long, and I, I saw you making an appeal for some people to help out continue the work you've been doing out here to keep this... Uh, I Just the trails and everything I was commenting on earlier, you've done such a great job. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think anyone's really going to be able to do what I do because, honestly, I'm, you know, homeless, and I have a lot of time on my hands. I'm jobless. I don't do anything. So I can be here every single day. So cause some people are like, how are you, how you able to come here every single day? And I'm like, well, because I don't do anything. You know? I don't have anything to do. So this is what I've been doing. So yeah, for the last four years, I've been cleaning up and, and doing stuff and rearranging stuff and making stuff look nice and making trails look nice and cutting trails and just cleaning up, picking up trash. I mean, just basic stuff that I would expect anyone to do that loves any park. It doesn't have to be Spawn Ranch. It could be any yeah. park. It could be anywhere that you love. Why would you throw trash well, in you, your I, house? I, I mean, come on, man. Just I think you saying <laughs> you didn't have anything to do, man. I'll tell you what, brother. Like, hearing a voice in your head that tells you to do something that someone else isn't doing, that sounds like you did have something to do, brother. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I think it pretty much goes with the spirit of some of the people that were here for you to follow the voice in your own head, man. You know, not somebody else's voice. So. Right. Um, you know, as a matter of fact... Contrary to any bullshit that some great, people swallow. Uh, great quote. I just got a great comment. <laughs> that I just got recently was from Robert Hendrickson. You can go on mansonblog.com and you can see he, there was an article about me written on the LA Beat uh, recently by Mike Ricci about me being, uh, you know, Stoner Van Houten, the guardian of the ranch. And Robert Hendrickson saw it and his quote was awesome. He says, I was a true, he called me a true American. The man picks up a broom instead of a gun and he cleans the state park without pay, without anything, without any question. And he's like, how many people do you know pick up a broom and go clean in a, a, a state park for free? Do anything for free. You know, it's like, so he, the guy, I mean, I thought that was amazing, man. He called Well, me. he's right, brother. It was nice, dude. That was really well cool. Well done, yeah, he's right, yeah. And that was really nice of him, even though I know some people have a problem with him. But anyway, besides that, <laughs> uh, I thought that was really cool, man. But I'm just doing it because I love it, man. And I love the song. This is a great song. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Garbage dump. And you can see I have trash bags back there that I leave. And people actually, see, it's funny, is that people will use it. So if you yeah, put it 